Hi guys, so we are going to keep talking about DNA. So that's what we were talking about before the break, but we mostly were just talking about DNA structure and some basics of DNA chemistry. Uh, now we're going to kind of jump ahead in your book because the uh, next main chapter that deals with DNA uh, in the book is chapter 25 that we're going to cover. Um, and it's about DNA metabolism, but mostly it's about DNA replication, DNA uh, repair, and a little bit about recombination. Um, so we're going to start by just talking about DNA replication. So first off, uh, just to give you a sense of how complicated this is, this is a diagram of a bacterial chromosome, bacterial genome. They have bacteria have circular chromosomes, as you may know, but what's important here is that each of these little positions is the location of a different gene that has some role in either DNA replication or DNA uh, error repair or some other uh, role in uh, either making or breaking DNA. So that's just an idea of how complicated this whole process is even though you might think it would be simple. So first, just some basic concepts about DNA replication. First thing to note is that DNA replication is what we call semi-conservative. That means you always start with one DNA molecule, which contains two strands of DNA. And after replication, the two new daughter molecules each contain one strand from the original parent and one strand that is new. Uh, and then that continues every round of, of replication. So this is our parent DNA molecule, again with the two parent strands. And in semi-conservative replication, the strands separate, they're both copied. new strands look like this so you have one of the parent strands and then a newly formed daughter strand So the reason we call we call this semi-conservative is that the original DNA is conserved but split into the two new daughter molecules. The alternative to semi-conservative would be fully conservative. So conservative replication, on the other hand, would look like this. You still are starting with double-stranded parent molecule, but then the new newly formed molecules would look like this. One would be just the original parent DNA, and then another molecule which would have the new daughter DNA. So this is conservative replication because the original parent DNA is completely conserved. So this is the daughter DNA. Now, question is, how do you know the difference? How would you, you find out whether conservative or semi-conservative uh, replication is how DNA replication works. And so this uh, is a kind of famous experiment 
It's called the Meselson Stahl experiment, where they grew up uh, DNA in bacteria, or they grew up bacteria in a medium that contained a radioactive isotope of nitrogen, nitrogen 15, which is a, uh, heavier than the normal isotope of nitrogen, which is nitrogen 14. And that made the, all the DNA that the bacteria made through replication contain this isotope because of course uh, DNA contains nitrogen and when they then ran those bacteria or their DNA in uh, through this cesium chloride density gradient uh, which is basically a fancy way of separating molecules by size but uh, in this case um, you're you're running the molecules through this solution of cesium chloride in a centrifuge tube and the way it uh, uh, works is that uh, heavier molecules end up at the bottom of the tube and lighter ones end up at the top so it's kind of like uh, electrophoresis but uh, a little more sensitive um, even though you know nitrogen 15 nitrogen 14 are, are only one neutron uh, in difference a, a dna molecule contains millions of a chromosome anyway contains millions of nitrogen atoms so those add up so when you run the so-called heavy dna through cesium chloride uh, it ends up towards the bottom of your density gradient and then uh, after then taking those bacteria that had grown in the presence of, of nitrogen 15 and growing them in a new medium that contained only nitrogen 14 the assumption is, and the fact is, that all the new DNA that the bacteria form in the new solution will uh, be made using only nitrogen-14. So any nitrogen-15 that is still present would be left over from the previous generation of DNA. So when they ran the new uh, hybrid DNA that contains some nitrogen-15, some nitrogen through the cesium chloride gradient, they found that the the DNA settled at a position sort of intermediate in the, the, the gradient, um, which means that the, the first generation daughter molecules must be hybrid, meaning containing both parent and daughter DNA strands. If they weren't hybrids, in other words, if the DNA was replicating conservatively instead of semi-conservatively, then you would have only seen uh, a, a band in the previous position where the heavy DNA had shown up and then a band that contained only light DNA. Uh, but the fact that you see the intermediate band means that at least that first round is semi-conservative. And then in the next round, uh, again growing the bacteria in just the presence of light DNA, the second generation, you got two bands. You got a band containing the hybrid DNA which still had the heavy nitrogen from the first generation and then a band which is just light DNA and so that means those are the new molecules that contain presumably the DNA from the previous generation plus the second generation. So anyway, that experiment just proved that DNA replication is semi-conservative. The other important thing to know about DNA replication is that it is bidirectional which means that uh, wherever the replication process begins along a chromosome it proceeds in both directions, in other words, towards both ends. Uh, the place where replication starts on a chromosome is called the origin of replication. Most bacteria, uh, remember bacteria have circular chromosomes, so they usually just have one origin of replication. Eukaryote chromosomes, like in humans, uh, for example, have multiple origins of replication, so the uh, replication can actually begin at multiple points along the chromosome, but regardless, the direction of replication is toward both ends. So in the case of a circular chromosome, replication starts in the middle, uh, proceeds toward both ends, and eventually they meet. So that's what's happening here. You're starting with a, a parental uh, duplex DNA molecule, two strands. Uh, they're not showing them as a double helix, but that's what they actually would look like. And then uh, the replication, uh, origin of replication, presumably would be um, somewhere here. So the origin would be uh, somewhere around here and you have replication proceeding then this way around the circle and this way around the circle. 
So as the two strands separate and the two new daughter strands are formed, you have these structures called replication forks. So at each end, uh, the replication forks start moving, one moving again kind of counterclockwise uh, like this, and the other one moving clockwise like this. And the new new daughter strands being replicated as they go. Um, now again, because this is a circle, eventually those two replication forks will bump into each other, um, and then the two new daughter strands will be uh, united to form a single strand, and you end up with two new daughter duplex molecules. Uh, now, of course, in a linear chromosome, it's basically the same idea, except that the uh, it's because the chromosome is linear, eventually the replication forks just get to the end of the chromosome and then they just stop. The, the replication just ends at that point. Um, another important fact about DNA replication is that it proceeds in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Uh, what does that mean? That means that the, the enzymes that make DNA, which we'll talk about in a minute, always move in the same direction. They start uh, from the five prime end of the growing strand and they always add new nucleotides to the three prime end. So that means again if you're moving along the daughter strand replication proceeds in the five prime to three prime direction. Um, on the other on the template strand the, or the parent strand the because of course DNA is always anti-parallel on the parent strand from there from its point of view replication uh, is moving the other way so you have DNA polymerase or the enzyme that makes DNA starting at the 3' prime end and going from the 5' prime end. The way that I like to remember this um, is uh, a little mnemonic where I remember that uh, making a new DNA strand is like writing a, uh, a sentence. So you're writing something down. Um, and so uh, to the extent that's true, the replication uh, for the daughter strand goes from five prime to three prime, um, and you remember the five prime, three prime are just arbitrary numbers. They're just numbers we use to uh, label the the carbon atoms in the ribose or the deoxyribose molecule, and so they don't really represent quantities. But um, you know, simply because five is bigger than three, um, I like to think of moving from 5 to 3 is going down and moving from 3 to 5 is going up even though again those are not real directions. So what I say is that DNA in DNA replication um, DNA is uh, written written in quotes down meaning 5 prime to 3 prime and the template strand uh, is essentially being read. In other words, you, you can imagine the enzymes that are making the new DNA strand as sort of reading the template, just like you would read a sentence. So I say that the template strand is read up, meaning 3 prime to 5 prime. So replication in replication you write down and you read up. That's just a little helpful uh, mnemonic that I like to use. Now another fact about replication uh, that's a consequence of the, the movement of replication. So because replication proceeds 5 prime to 3 prime on the daughter strand, the replication fork moves along both strands at the same time. So if you're looking at one replication fork like we are here, the replication fork is moving um, to the right, which means that for one of the template strands, it's moving in what you call the correct direction, so from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. But on the other strand, the replication fork is moving in the opposite direction of the direction of replication. So what we say is that on the strand that corresponds to the uh, direction of the on the strand uh, in which the replication fork is moving in the same direction as replication then we call that the leading strand so this is the leading strand up here because it's moving from the three prime end of that strand toward the five prime end 
but if you look at the other strand, the replication fork is moving uh, still to the right, but it's moving toward the three prime end of that strand and the five prime end of the other. And so we call this strand the lagging strand. And the reason we call it the lagging strand is that because it's moving in the direction that's, that does not correspond to the direction of movement, those daughter strands cannot be synthesized as one contiguous molecule. Instead, the, the daughter strands on the lagging strand are made as these short fragments called Okazaki fragments. Um, and so that's one of the kind of extra steps with the near replication is that these lagging uh, strand fragments have to be assembled into a complete molecule. So next up, we will talk about some of the enzymes that are involved in both making DNA and in breaking it down.